Our first speaker is Jim Turk. Jim Turk is one of the leading authorities on post-secondary education in Canada. Currently, he is the executive director of the Canadian Association of University Teachers, representing more than 57,000 academic staff at over 100 universities and colleges across Canada. Prior to joining COUT, Jim was a member and acting chair of the Ontario Council of Regents for Colleges of Applied Arts and Technology, education director of the Ontario Federation of Labour, where he developed the largest labour-based literacy and second language program in the world, and Associate Professor of Canadian Studies at the University of Toronto. Please join me in welcoming Jim Turk. Thank you so much for the opportunity to be with you today. I can't tell you how impressed I am with the job that all of you have done in the fight to stop this very bad report. You deserve a lot of credit. And if you were listening to the CBC this morning, the first questioner was Vanessa, a student here, student leader here, who asked the Premier. And the Premier responded in what I think is a sign that your work is paying off. He said, wait a minute, this isn't my report. This isn't my report. Now, last Tuesday in the Telegraph Journal, he said, I'm willing to pay the price to do the right thing. Today, this is not my report. The only reason for that change is because of the work that you're doing. So you should give yourselves a big hand. When you only have a few minutes to address a crowd, and people don't want long speeches. You know, us professors, uh, we're used to 50-minute sound bites. Um, I, you know, I read through the report again really carefully yesterday, saying, well, what's the kernel of it? And every part I looked at, most parts of it were really bad. And if I, if I spent my time identifying and talking about each of the bad parts, I'm afraid I would take the 50-minute lecture time that you don't want me to take. So I guess the central message is it is indeed a bad report. It's a bad report for students. The students are going to have less choice if this report is implemented. And contrary to the impression the report has given, and we've done a very detailed analysis of the finances, the majority of students in New Brunswick will be less or will be worse off financially. If any of you read the report, in detail, there's a little sidebar where they tell the story of Molly, a student at the at St. Thomas University who incurred a $27,000 debt and how horrible this was. When we did the analysis of the report, in fact, where the report had been implemented, Molly would have had a $28,000 debt when she graduated. It's going to be a worse environment for faculty because the report recommends stripping faculty of their voice in academic decision making and saying in typical bureaucratic manner that they can only report to the Board of Governors through the President. Now all universities in this country are set up in a model where academic staff and students have control of the academic decision making through a Senate and the Board of Governors has responsibility for finance and administration. This report wants to strip faculty and students and Senates of the kinds of power that they have at every other university. This report, thirdly, is going to be very bad for the University of New Brunswick and for the University of Moncton. Uh, a small province like this has a challenge in having a national university. And UNB is a national university. You cut off UNBSJ, <laughs> you cut off UNBSJ, you're cutting off a third of the University of New Brunswick and its ability to be a viable national university will be severely compromised if not destroyed. You cut off Shippagan and Edmonston and you take a small, relatively small university that's trying to be uh, the Francophone university in the region and you diminish its capability of being that university for the Acadian community. It's a bad report for communities. Think of the pride that people of St. John have in UNBSJ. Yes. 
what they're being told is you should be grateful. Don't worry, we're going to get rid of this place, but we're going to replace it with St. John Polytechnic. Now, one of the most deceitful, one of the most deceitful parts of this report is they talk about, talk about the Polytechnic, and they say, well, you know, Polytechnic, right, there's Massachusetts Institute of Technology and Caltech, I mean, two of the most prestigious engineering universities in the world. Or there's Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute, or the Cole Polytechnic in Montreal or in Paris, and give the impression that what they're talking about for St. John is something of that sort. What they're talking about for St. John is a stripped-down version of Rick Miner's Seneca College in Toronto. And it will be a stripped-down version because Seneca College is the largest in the country, has uh, 17,000 full-time students, 90,000 part-time students, and it manages to offer nine applied degrees in total. That's what Rick, and, and Rick is one of the founders of Polytechnics Canada. Polytechnics Canada is not MIT and Caltech, it's community colleges that have some degree programs. And that's what they're proposing for you. Now what's sad, uh, saddest about this report is, you know, sometimes when the solution is right under your nose, you don't see it. The solution for the problems in New Brunswick is not to take a wrecking ball to Louis Robichaud's legacy. The solution is to address the two central problems, one of which is the serious underfunding of post-secondary education in this province. <laughs> On a per capita basis, New Brunswick is dead last amongst Canadian provinces in the funding of uh, universities, dead last. What's proposed in this report would not pay half of the deferred maintenance bill of the University of New Brunswick two campuses. Wouldn't pay half of the deferred maintenance bill, much less uh, move New Brunswick into the middle rank of Canadian provinces in terms of funding. So it doesn't recognize that the heart of the change has to be adequate funding, because in the absence of adequate funding, there's only one other source of money, and that's students and their families. And no matter how they slice it up, they're going to take more money from students, make it more expensive to go if they don't restore proper funding for universities and colleges in this province. Yay. The other part of the solution, the second part of the solution, is for New Brunswick to follow the lead of other provinces in unshackling its community colleges so they can offer a broader range of programs and meet some of the need that universities don't meet and to provide better links between colleges and universities so students have the opportunity if they start out in a college and decide that they really have an aptitude and an interest in a certain area to carry on in the university and to have articulation agreements and laddering programs. Those are two reforms that can be made and that would solve the problem without the wrecking ball would save this university in St. John, would save University of Moncton and Chippegan and Edmonston, and would meet the needs of the people of New Brunswick. I just want to end by saying this morning when I came down, excuse me a second, there's a limit to how much I'm going to take off, I'm going to put something up. When I came down this morning, I was happy to buy this shirt And I'm looking forward to coming back in five years and wearing this shirt, not as a relic of what was, but as a symbol of what is. And if Sean Graham is still going to be premier in five years, when I come back wearing this shirt and UNBSJ is still here, it's going to be because he's smart enough to reject this report and realize that it's not in his interest or in the interest of the people of New Brunswick. Thank you very much.